Yep, take a good long look. No one will ever see this again. Hey everybody, Reef Girl here, and welcome to my channel. Before we get started, I'd love it if you'd go and subscribe, if you haven't already. Also, while you're there, hit that notification bell so you can be right up to date with everything I have coming your way in the next several months. There is a lot going on and a lot of new stuff to come. Okay, let's get started on one final tour of Amathia's garden, my Red Sea Reefer XL425. If you follow me on Instagram or you've seen my live streams, you might already know that my husband and I are moving to be closer to family. That means this tank has to be taken apart. It's in a room in our house, which I use for my fish room, but actually should be a bedroom. And before we can sell our house, it has to be emptied out and restored to its original condition. And that includes Mollywood. It'll have to be taken down and moved, but I'm going to keep it running as is for the time being. So, I need to move this reef. To make it as stress-free as possible and reduce the risk as much as I could, I decided against trying to move this entire setup in one or two days. I set up a whole new tank. The cycle began in early February, and now it's the end of April. Things look good in that tank, so I moved a whole bunch of the sand bed corals and a few frags from here into that tank. They're thriving. Next, the rest of the stuff. <laughs> I have to turn my mind to planning just how to do that. But this video isn't about that. This is a farewell tour of Amathia's garden at the very end, April 2020, documentation of how it looks. Here is a long side boob all the way to the other end of the tank. And right here, you can see my frag rack. These are mostly knockoffs, either from the reef keeper hitting something or the fish fighting or snails. If I see any laying around, I mount them on a frag plug and put them here. They'll go to the LFS once all the crazy is over and things open up again. There are my red mushrooms, and here are my chocolate brown and turquoise mushrooms. Kryptonite candy cane, minty candy cane, and moving over here is my green goniastria. Really has grown. Now this green pally is getting snipped off as soon as I pull this piece of rock out. I don't trust it. This is a red Cyphastria. It has done extremely well. Devil's Eye Chalice, Green Leptocerus, and Lucy. Lucy was at death's door and she is making a comeback. I'm loving how well she's doing. I hope she does well in the other tank. And here is that strange Chalice. And the clownfish, they live in this corner. This is their territory. I think I may try and set things up so they can have a similar spot in the holding tank. Okay, and here we are at the left side. I can't really get very far back because I'm so close to the wall here. There's the frag rack, as usual, a whole bunch of assorted stuff on it. This one has a few Seasons Greetings Monty frags going down to the back left corner here. This is the domain of the Pistol Shrimp and the Aurora Gobies. But I have only seen one Aurora Goby. The last time I saw two was in early February. The one that I have seen comes out only rarely. I'm pretty sure they live down here. I have heard the Pistol Shrimp snapping away and I'm gonna have to be extremely careful when I remove this maze brain because I think they live under there and I don't want to harm them by collapsing all their tunnels. I have to do a bit of research and see whether there's anything special I need to do. 
there's my war coral. It is really starting to grow crazy. It's encrusting at the front and the back onto the adjacent rocks. So that is going to break apart when I move those structures. But that's okay. It'll just leave a frag on the rocks to keep growing. And here's my black torch with pink tips on the tentacles and a green mouth. Love this thing. It's in very low light right now. That's why it's so pale, because the frag rack is right above it. But that's going away soon. Looking from the front, at the very back is my clump of sunny Ds, and right beside it, a red plating Montipora. Here's my green torch. I got this as two heads in September of 2018. And there are the blue jean pallies. And the orange is what's left of an acan. It's being killed off from both sides, on the left by the torch, and on the right, I think, by the blue jean pallies. Here's an orange chalice with yellow and green eyes. I apologize for how blurry this is. It's at the very back of the tank and hidden behind my Duncan. Very hard to get a good shot of it. And while we're talking about hidden corals, here's another one. This is my Tangerine Juice Leptocirrus. It's only viewable from two angles, this one and from the side, and that's it. It is really growing well, and when I take this tank apart, I'm fairly sure it's going to break into two pieces because it's bridged two rock structures. And moving back to the left side of the tank, here is my Duncan. All those little heads don't get enough light. They're hanging in there, but just barely. The only time they do get any light is when the Orphex are on. So when I move it to the other tank, I'll see if I can do something about that. This is one of my favorite vignettes in the tank. This arch with utter chaos at either end, some orange rainbow pallies, there's Buster the Symphilia, Citrus Rhodactus, a red chalice. Oh, there's Elvis in his barnacle. Back there, I have a 24 karat gold chalice, which is growing like crazy. Up here is the button scoli, which has some weirdness going on with it. At first, I wondered if it was budding, but that's apparently so rare as to be impossible. So, I'll have to wait and see when I get it off this arch what is actually happening. Here's my splatter scully. Love this thing and when it gets puffed up it's gorgeous. Over here is a lemon spice favia getting killed off by this torch. I'm gonna have to do something to separate them when I move this. Up top here behind the Duncan, I have a couple of acans. I am sure they're in the wrong spot for optimal growth. I think it's too bright. I'll have to see if I can get them off this rock so that I can move them down to the sand bed when they go to the other tank. Here's a small arch that's made of one piece of Texas holy rock. I've placed these corals here and it's a free for all. They're definitely fighting with each other. The scolies at this end, party crasher Cyphastria being beat back by the scoli and by the Goniopora, one surviving Palithoa hanging in there, some red Cyphastria also being beat back by the Goniopora, and this hammer. This hammer randomly reaches sweepers out and hits whatever it can. At the top is this green daylily type Goniopora, and check out those sweepers on the polyps. It has beat back both the Cyphastrias on either side of it. Down here is Stanley. Stanley is a Crocia clam, and I think he's reached pretty close to his maximum size at this point. Stanley's doing so well. I've had him for about two years now, and he is showing no signs of any trouble. Fantastic growth, and I just love this creature. When I built my aquascape, I deliberately created this whole area intending to use encrusting corals. 
and it proved to work really well. So well, in fact, that I had to remove my pagoda coral that used to be in this place because the green leptoceris right beside it was attacking it after hours. Long tentacles coming out and essentially killing the tissue along that edge. So I took it out and put it in the holding tank. It's doing great. These are two leptastria. The colors are really subtle and interesting. Over here is the jack-o'-lantern leptoceris. And you can see down here there's something going on where the two types of leptoceris are meeting each other. So that's all part of one rock structure, so it'll get moved together. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. This bright green Montipora is, I believe, an encrusting type that's actually plating because of where it is. It bridges the two separate rock pillars and will break in half when I take them apart. This is the base of a PC rainbow where the main branch broke off. I moved that branch up here and it's encrusting out really well, but it still needs to develop the proper color, so I guess I'll just have to wait. And now for some secrets revealed. This whole area was in the dark until the Orifex and then until the Montipora was fragged. Down here is a Jason Fox Sunset Stylo Chanelia. They're supposed to do extremely well in low or no light, but it wasn't growing. It was hanging on, but not getting any bigger. Now that it's getting light, it's growing. This is a Divine Mystic Sunset Montipora. Those polyps are actually dark blue, but that doesn't show up well with this filter. Behind the Monty is a meteor shower Cyphastria that I had thought was dead, but it's actually growing. You might recognize this starburst Montipora colony from my Montipora fragging video. It has recovered nicely, and the strange thing is the edges are starting to grow downwards instead of upwards. It already needs fragging again. Not looking forward to that. Now to have a look at the Acropora. Most of these I acquired as no names, so I gave them a name. This one I call RG Identity Crisis because it has a green base with kind of light green polyps. The growing tips are blue and it's starting to develop a pinkish yellow color at the top. It doesn't know what it wants to be, so therefore, identity crisis. Coming over here is RG Carpet Bomb. This didn't have a name either, but the reason I called it Carpet Bomb is take a look at how it's encrusting. Next up is another no name. I called it RG Midnight Firefly. It is a fast grower. Check out that encrusting. I've also had to take frags because it was growing so fast it was starting to touch everything nearby. This yellow Millipora is another fast grower. I got it as a one branch frag in November of 2019 and it has exploded in growth in the last six weeks or so. I'm loving some of the colors I'm seeing come along on it and I'm really looking forward to see how it develops. There's the original branch. The very top had three little coralites and everything else came from the base encrusting outwards. And right nearby, taking over the world, is the Miyagi Tort. I've had to trim it back a few times because it was encroaching on other corals nearby and about to touch. It is wonderful, always has its polyps extended. I absolutely love it. I did have to take a big piece off on the right hand side to give the branching Cyphastria a chance to grow properly. Branching Cyphastria is also doing well. You can see it's encrusting right up into the gloom there. I love the color on this pale, pale green with red polyps. Up here is the Rose Millipora. This thing has blue polyps. They don't always look blue, but today they're pretty good. I think it has a lot to do with the light, what phase my Kessel is at as it moves through the day. And here's Narnia. This is what the fish store called it. I am loving this thing. The plum base, the ochre orange colored stem, and the yellow growing tips. It is going to be a stunner when it's big. Mm -hmm. 
And here is the craziest, fastest growing SPS I have ever had, the Montipora Hirsuta. I have two frag racks loaded with frags that have just basically broken off this colony. This is another no-name coral. I've decided to call it RG My Little Pony Frizzle. It's furry. It's all different colors. I love this thing. It's about four times the size it was when I got it as a frag in June of 2019. It obviously loves all of this light. There are about four different colors on this thing, depending on what time of day it is. I can hardly wait to see it as a massive colony. And in the back is a pink tabling acro. The skin is green and those coralites have shot up recently. I think it's also on the verge of really taking off. Moving down to the center of the tank is my fox coral. This is another coral that has dramatically increased in size. I love the delicate colors and the texture of this. It's actually a euphilia. It'll be interesting to see how big this thing can actually get once it has space to really grow. This chalice above the fox coral looks like there's damage along the lower edge, so there's obviously some interaction there. I have another chalice here. Don't know what the name of it is. Above that is the marble favia. Both of these seem to really be happy where they are. And part of being happy is that I fragged this season's greetings, allowing more light to get through to those corals. Moving down further is my cherry blastomosa. Once this is out in the open, it will be spectacular again. It's kind of jammed in that spot, and I'm surprised it's doing as well as it is. Here's one of the pectinia frags I kept for myself after fragging the colony. It is well healed and on its way. This blastomosa is actually brighter in real life than what you see here. The colors are gorgeous on this thing. And right beside that is my yellow hammer. I got this yellow hammer from Ash at Passion Reef last November at the KW Coral Show. Below the hammer is a lobophilia. This is a strange one. I haven't been able to identify the type, but it has grown a lot. I've had it about 18 months now, I think, and every day it looks a little bit different. Up here, the red digitata is being overwhelmed by the naughty spiral. Even if I keep cutting back that front edge, the naughty spiral keeps growing, but the digi seems to be holding on. Up here, I have the Turbinaria reniformis, my scroll coral. It's loose in that spot. I'm probably going to remove it completely before I try and move the rocks out of here when it's time to transfer this section into the holding tank. And the red Goniopora. I got it in June of 2019 and it was perhaps six polyps. It has exploded in growth, although occasionally it does close completely. Back here is the bubblegum digitata and in the very back, another piece of the red Montipora capricornus. And here's a front view of the Goniastria, and also some Fruit Loop zoanthids and some blue-eyed blondes. These are the survivors of a whole bunch of different ones that I had. Here's a front view of the red Cyphastria and the Devil's Eye Chalice. I also have a Platygyra here. It's finally starting to encrust upwards on the rocks. And my Cinerinas. I have two, as you can see. Both are lush and fluffy and gorgeous. Another coral I can hardly wait to give it space to actually spread out to its full size. And this is another favorite vignette in the tank. I used to think this side of the tank was boring. Not anymore. Oh, let's not forget the grafted Montipora. It is really starting to grow quickly. And I also have a meteor shower Cyphastria that came back from the dead. Literally was a speck of fluorescence on a dark piece of rock. I left it there and it grew. And here's another Cyphastria. I'm sure it has a name, but I don't know what that is. 
The growing edges on this thing are yellow and pink and green. You can't see that because it's curled around the rock that it's on, but pretty soon the growing edge is going to emerge back into the light. And then it'll be interesting to see where it goes from there. At the back here, I have some bullseye rhodactus. They're not fully open. I think they're dropping some babies. This is mushroom land. I have several different types of discosoma and rhodactus. Right there is a chalice. I think it's a mummy eye. It is not doing well. It's being killed by the mushrooms. I've tried and I can't get it off that rock. So that's pretty much it. Other than a few corals I've already moved to the other tank, I think I've shown you everything that's in here, some of which you've never seen before because it's hidden or because there wasn't enough of it growing to be able to see anything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It was an extra long one, but I felt it was necessary to really truly try and document what is here right now at the end. I already have a lot of footage of the new tank. I'm keeping track as things are going along so that I can keep everybody up to date with what's happening. So wish me luck. I'm terrified. I'm really hoping I can pull most of this through and get it moved over and then keep it alive until I have a brand new tank that's bigger, a lot bigger, to move it all again. And let's not forget about the fish. All the fish have their territories, and as I break this apart, I'm going to have to do my best to take the fish at the same time as I take their territory. Otherwise, at both ends, I could have aggression and problems. Right now, it's peaceful. Everyone gets along. They all have somewhere to sleep at night. They all have places they can hide. And I'm hoping I can transfer them so that we can retain that. So thank you so much for watching and I will keep you posted.